Are the new Tesla Semi specs a game changer or just another overhyped vehicle? Let's talk about it. We've got some exciting news. Tesla's semi specs have been revealed, and we've got a major new milestone for Mega Pack production, plus an update on the 4680 battery cell. Let's get into it. First up, the specs of Tesla's upcoming semi truck. On December 31, Twitter user at the Green the Only posted an image gallery that allegedly originated on Tesla's online parts catalog, depicting certain systems in the company's new rig. The images show several systems. At Green the Only specifically calls attention to the modular battery packs rated for 1000 volts, the mega cooling modules, and two rear axles named Torque and Efficiency. The torque axle can be identified as the pair of engines located just in front of the single engine at the very rear. The torque axle is reportedly engaged only when a heavy load or acceleration requires it. When a heavy load or acceleration requires it, the torque axle engages. Otherwise, it runs on the efficiency axle optimized for constant highway speeds. We also have big news in our second story, Mega Pack Production. The company has announced that they will begin producing Mega Packs this month, which are bigger batteries than those made before. From the picture of this image, we can see a large coolant tank where the charging port is, so it makes sense that's where they put it. The fact that one megawatt will charge the semi's huge batteries means they must be separated into three sub-packs, leading people to suspect modularity. On Twitter, images of the battery pack and a chart released by Next Big Future helped confirm its modularity. It was possible that Tesla designed a smaller battery pack for its upcoming semi truck and was planning to manufacture two versions, one with 300 miles of range and the other with 500 miles. The image from the parts catalog that Green dug up shows that Tesla was smarter than other car makers. They made sub packs that can be disconnected and removed according to users' needs. The image shows that the batteries are organized into three rows of sub packs containing three modules. Next Big Future also states that despite rough numbers, the 300 mile semi weighs 5,500 pounds, less than 500 miles semi, even though these two vehicles have almost identical specs. Removing the truck's 390 kilowatt hours worth of batteries allows it to haul more at the cost of reduced range but still maintains efficiency and power. The modularity of the Tesla Semi could be a game changer that attracts many more buyers to the truck. Being able to refit a shorter range model with a larger battery pack means Tesla can offer more variants of its cars without having to redesign the vehicles from scratch. The vehicle identification number or VIN label included with the images gives us some hard numbers regarding its capacity. Let's look at some information related to vehicle safety, rim dimensions, tire pressures, and gross vehicle weight rating or GVWR. The label states that the semi's maximum operating load is 48,800 pounds. That includes cargo and driver weight fluids such as windshield wiper fluid but not fuel. The cargo on a tractor itself is irrelevant, as well as any force that the trailer's hookup may add to it. The capacity of almost 49,000 pounds is still quite impressive. Most modern large-scale trucks like the Peterbilt 579 have a gross vehicle weight rating of 80,000 pounds, but that's on the high end and would apply to long-haul applications, not local deliveries. Given those numbers from the VIN label, we can conclude that Tesla's Semi is comparable in size to a 2006 model 379 Peterbilt. However, we don't just have the VIN label to go off of. We also have a chart from Next Big Future that helps us get a complete picture. The 500's weight is 26,000 pounds. This would be the tractor's curb weight, or its total ready-to-drive weight, including all fluids and with no additional payload. The 500-mile semi-truck can carry 44,000 pounds and the 300-mile variant 49,500 pounds. This is because the shorter range does not require as much energy storage, so there's more room for cargo in its trailer. The gross carry weight or GCW is separate from the tractor's GVWR, and this is why some people were confused. 
48,800 pounds of GCW doesn't account for payload capacity. We witnessed the delivery event in December 1, 2022, but a semi's capacity is actually calculated based on its axles. The clue for that is on Twitter where you can see the VIN labels which include a heading for GAWR, Gross Axle Weight Rating. The numbers show that the tractor's total gross weight rating is spread over its axles, with most capacity provided by the rear tube. Semi-truck GVWR is calculated to consider the weight of its trailer, hitch, and cargo separately from that of the vehicle itself. But in reality, when fully loaded with both passengers and freight, a semi's axles can add about 82,000 pounds, exactly as Elon said. While we still rely on sleuthing to get solid numbers, more road data is being made available now that the semi is out in the world and hauling freight. It's reassuring to see that most of the data points we gathered last year line up with more official benchmarks like VIN labels. And it's especially heartening to see the data laid out into the chart shows just how much more efficient the Tesla Semi is than any other truck on the market. After these news came out, I bet Tesla engineers are feeling pretty good. Hey, this is Fred. Thanks so much for watching this far in the video. We're glad you're here. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And comment below on what you think of Tesla's semi-truck specs. As many people do at the beginning of a new year, Tesla looked back on its accomplishments in December and posted an updated list of milestones that were hit during 2022. The mention of their mega factory in Lathrop, California where Tesla manufactures its Megapack energy storage systems is among the most impressive numbers on that list. Tesla has reported that the factory can produce 10,000 Megapacks per year. This matches up with reports from November about Tesla's goals for the facility. The production increase was caused by the opening a new facility at Giga Nevada, where Megapacks were previously made. Reports show that 2,100 units per year were produced there. Despite the recession and high unemployment rates, demand for Tesla's Megapack units has risen sharply over the last couple of years. Facilities in California, Canada, Australia, and Hawaii have opened recently, while Slovenia and Belgium also added units at their facilities. So many countries have begun using the Megapack to modernize their infrastructure. For example, Hawaii's use of the Megapack has allowed them finally to rid themselves of coal power plants. A small town in Belgium recently installed a new Megapack facility and replaced a generator from World War II to stabilize the local power grid and this explosion of customers seems to have caught Tesla off guard. As of December 2022, Tesla had listed their earliest estimated delivery date for new Megapack orders as late 2024. This is good news for Tesla, as each new 10,000 units is valued at over 2 million US dollars. If they manage to fill all those orders, this could amount to more than 20 billion in revenue for the company. Musk has said that there is a nearly infinite demand for energy storage, and Tesla's energy services could eventually be more profitable than even their vehicle fleet. That's probably because the world desperately needs solutions to both of these problems replacing aging energy infrastructure and eliminating polluting sources. Whatever the reasons for Megapack flying off the shelves, it translates to a lot of money for Tesla. No bad start to 2023. The company's end-of-year recap posted on Twitter reflects this. The company reached several major milestones, production of the new Megapack facility, the first Tesla semi-deliveries, and more. However, one telling entry is about 4680 battery cell production. In a recent announcement, Tesla claimed that its newest cell, its biggest yet, is being produced at such a high volume that it can support the production of more than 1,000 cars per week. This translates to 868,000 cells made in just 7 days. The news was first reported by the Cato Road facility in Fremont, California where Tesla currently produces most of its 4680 cells. These numbers are impressive considering that Giga's new production lines in facilities like Giga Texas haven't been completed. 
But these reports come at almost the same time as news of another facility, Giga Texas, hitting model wire production numbers as high as 3,000 per week. The increased production of 4680 cells is likely to have contributed to this milestone, but we can't be sure by how much, as Giga Texas manufactures both models with 4680 and 2170 batteries. But it is safe to assume that Tesla's ability to support the production of 104680 cars a week will be an extremely useful capability. Tesla's ramped up its battery production in preparation for an expected bump in EV sales over the next few years, as countries like the US pass legislation to help incentivize people to buy their greener vehicles. And these numbers only reflect Tesla's own battery production team. Meanwhile, the company is still getting help from partners like Panasonic, who are just beginning construction of a new battery production facility in the United States. The only Tesla vehicle currently using the 4680 cells is the Model Y, and ramping up production of that car will help get more crossovers shipped. But if company's production ramp is successful and it can produce more cells than are needed for Model Y production, then newer models could also be equipped with them. So, what do you think about Tesla's new Semi? Feel free to share your thoughts about the new specs of the Tesla Semi. Stay tuned for more related content on our YouTube channel if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. And if you want to know why Tesla created Semis in the first place, click on this video.